In the 1940s, at the height of bus transportation in America, the Evansville Greyhound bus station was a bustling hub of activity. The station opened in 1939 and was an immediate success. At one time, 106 buses arrived and departed from the station daily. The station was constructed in art modern style, highlighted by a futuristic facade with a horizontal focus. The front of the building was complemented by a large neon sign with a running Greyhound logo. Inside the building, a diner was open 24 hours a day, a rarity in that time. A men's and women's balcony overlooked the main waiting area where travelers could sit, smoke, and wait for their bus. The ticket and baggage area was found at the back of the terminal, and the back door provided a port for travelers to arrive and depart. Buses sat in the parking lot behind the station, briefly pausing before carrying more passengers across the nation. Construction began on the Greyhound station in 1938. The footprint of the old Cadic Theater, which stood at the corner of 3rd and Sycamore Street, was used to give the building its unique curved shape. The building itself cost $150,000 to complete. Although at one time this station was a widely utilized part of the city, over time its usage declined greatly. As buses gave way to airplanes and personal automobiles, the need for an extensive system such as Greyhound provided declined. Tom Scott, a longtime employee of the Greyhound station, has seen many of these changes occur firsthand. Well, when they deregulated the airlines, um, the prices came down and there were a lot more flights. And um, so a lot of people were taking planes, you know, that, they, that uh, before took the buses. Plus, as more people got cars, two cars in the family, um, they would drive more to locations. And they built more highways, the interstates. Instead of taking a lot of two-lane roads to places, they had interstates they could drive much easier and it just was, uh, you know, transformation, you know, more and more people have more, uh, you know, opportunities to travel different ways. As these trends continued into the end of the century, Greyhound was forced to make many cutbacks and debated abandoning the downtown station. Fewer and fewer buses used the terminal, so its effectiveness was brought into question. For years, Greyhound Corporation has discussed moving the terminal to different locations throughout Evansville, but no definitive action was ever taken. In 1987, a massive renovation modernized the station. However, it robbed the station of the beauty of its original architecture. A drop ceiling made the waiting area appear to be one story and hid the balconies from view. Some of the original crown molding survives in the original bathrooms and upstairs balconies, but this area is not accessible by the public. In the present, the Greyhound station has changed dramatically from its original design. The 1987 renovation transformed the building from a unique structure to one that could simply survive in a modern world. Architecture was sacrificed for practicality as the Greyhound Corporation struggled financially. When visitors arrive at this station in the present time, they now see a simple waiting room and vending area instead of the original overlooks and diner. The bus schedule has also been reduced because of decreased usage. We have four now, two during the daytime and two in the middle of the night. Mayor Jonathan Winesapple was asked about his thoughts regarding the Greyhound Station as a unique structure and as an economic asset to the city. Well, we'd, we'd like to see the architecture preserved. Um, obviously, there are going to have to be changes to the interior of the building, and that, that's expected. But at a minimum, we'd like to see the, the outside architectural preserved. Um, obviously, it has to be for some functional, practical use, um, you know, which is always a uh, a balancing act when, you, when you're working with developers, but, but I would think anyone who is interested in that building would want to see it preserved because that's what makes it unique. Although many original aspects of the bus station are gone, several interesting features remain. One is the door handles on the front doors, which depict a running dog and a Greyhound bus on their face. In the upstairs bathrooms and men's and women's balconies, some of the original crown molding remains, although it has been repainted several times. The banisters on the stairs and the balcony's guardrail also display art modern features. The future of the Greyhound Station is unknown. The building itself was entered on the National Register of Historic Places, which offers some protection to the building against destruction for projects funded by the federal government. Greyhound Corporation is planning to move local operations to the existing Met Station, and the city of Evansville has bought the property where the station is located. Well, we've worked out a, a deal with Greyhound. 
uh, where the city will actually purchase the property and in exchange um, they are relocating their operations to where our METS bus terminal is. So, so actually it's a win-win I think for everybody. Um, Greyhound has the opportunity to kind of tie in in an intermodal sense with our city bus service at the METS facility which is now under con construction and expansion and in exchange they are going to be able to get rid of the property that they now own uh, which the city will take acquisition of. Several options exist for the future of the station. A term that has been widely used when discussing the Greyhound station is adaptive reuse. Adaptive reuse is finding another way to utilize an existing structure but to change its primary purpose so that it becomes a productive part of society again. Well, it is a historical building. Um, most other cities, the old bus stations have been torn down, are completely remodeled so that you can't tell they were a bus station. So this is one of the, um, well, it's the only one that has a working uh, sign with the running dog. Uh, some of the lights are out on the other part of the sign because it is so old. But uh, now this, this is a unique uh, building well, if the city put money into it, they could make this into a tourist information area. Uh, it's already a historical building. Uh, the city would already own it. It won't cost anything other than to remodel it. It's centrally located uh, to downtown Evansville. It's not going to be a bus station. <laughs> that I can practically guarantee you. But I, we've received a lot of interest from folks who'd like to put in a diner. I mean, you can imagine, you know, looking at that architecture, how a diner would make sense, um, or even to another type of restaurant, um, a World War II era restaurant, or, you know, something along those lines that kind of, that, that where its use ties in with the architecture that, that's present. I mean, it's a, it's a notable landmark, uh, not just in downtown Evans, but really throughout the community. So I, we want to preserve that from the city's perspective, and I would think a developer would also because that will only enhance its use. The future of the Greyhound Station is still unknown. The building has outlived its purpose, but hopefully the unique structure itself can be preserved. It would truly be a shame to let this piece of Evansville history fade away into obscurity.